Well, judo is a very popular uh, sport in France, so a lot of people do it. But uh, my uncle had a, a dojo, which is a place where you uh, practice judo. Uh, and so at three years old, I was lucky enough to, uh, to be put in a judo gi and, uh, and start practicing. And I guess I, uh, I fell in love with it and I kept doing it. And now I've been doing that for over 40 years. I started judo because my dad, my brother, and my two sisters started were already started judo for about a long time. Uh, I started doing judo because I saw that my dad and my older sister have been doing it. It looks fun, so I wanted to give it a go. I started judo because it was a passion that my dad had as a kid and that he wanted to share with his children, which is me. So at seven years old, I started judo. It's good to be involved in karate because you learn lots of different skills that help you become stronger in many different ways. Welcome everyone. Um, just so everybody knows, this session is being recorded. And um, yeah, we thank you for joining us. We started these Faces of Calgary Sport um, a few months, a couple months ago. Just in light of COVID and the pandemic and all the restrictions, we wanted to give Calgarians an opportunity to be introduced to certain sports that might be allowed. Um, you know what, it's June 3rd, we're starting reopening, people are getting vaccinated. So I think we're starting to see sports and stuff reopen gradually. So uh, this is a celebration day and thanks for joining us uh, as we talk martial arts. I always wanna give, just before I introduce our panel, I wanna give everybody, um, a little bit of an intro on who registered for this. Um, so within the registrations, uh, about a third have heard of sport. Some of the sports have seen some pictures, but know nothing really about them. Uh, another third have watched videos of the sport, have watched it online, maybe on TV. And again, uh, just over a third have either tried one of the sports or actively take part. So we have a lot of um, clubs that are members of Sport Calgary within martial arts, but we are really happy that uh, these three panelists could join us today and talk about their sport, uh, their club. And again, for uh, those who registered, and this will be online, and um, we will be able to have all the links um, available to everybody, uh, just how to get involved. So let me start. Uh, I'm going to start with Gary Yamashita. Did I get that, Gary? That's Yay. Right. Okay, good. Uh, Gary is with uh, Heroes Judo Club. Gary is seventh degree black belt in judo, president and technical director for Heroes Judo Club, and has been a member of the club since 1988. Uh, member of Judo Alberta Provincial Coaching Staff, a member of the Judo Alberta Black Belt Grading Committee, a master coach developer for judo, and is a member of the Judo Canada National Coaching Certification Program, uh, so one of the NCCP committees. So thank you, Gary. Thank you for joining us. And then we have uh, Aaron Fisher. So Aaron is sensei for Calgary Akike. Did I say Akikai? Akikai, darn it, sorry, <laughs> uh, Aikido Club. So, oh my goodness, I'd written this what I thought was phonetically. Um, so I apologize for that. Uh, Aaron first started Aikido in 1995 under Yasuhisa, Yasuhisa Inaba. Very so, good. Okay, sixth Dan and inductee into the Canadian Black Belt Hall of Fame uh, and has been teaching Aikido since 2003. He's traveled extensively to Japan and elsewhere to learn from some of the world's top Aikido masters and has been the president of Calgary Aiki, uh, yeah, president Aikikai. Of <laughs> Kikai. Now I'm going to mess myself up. Um, for the past two years. So welcome, Aaron. And uh, Aaron's teasing us because he's outside and uh, we know how warm it is. So uh, thank you for, for giving us uh, that viewpoint. Uh, and finally, we have uh, welcome Santiago. Santiago Osuna Wafer uh, with Osuna Karate. So uh, thank you that you could join us. Uh, Santiago is a 19 year old para karate athlete. He's been involved in karate for about 14 years, was a member of the provincial team for three years and a part of the national team for those same years. He's competed at the US Open and the Irish Open 
It is his personal goal to advocate and encourage the participation of more athletes with disabilities in karate. A first degree Shodan black belt, he is an experienced instructor, competitor in para karate. We have been on CTV or Global Morning News, Santiago, uh, yeah. doing some demonstrations. And his uh, father, Juan, is, uh, we're very thankful for all his, his help because he is on Sport Calgary's um, committee. So uh, welcome, Santiago. So, Thank okay. You. We're going to start, um, and as I mentioned kind of before, we had a little debrief. Um, I want to start with some basics because, uh, you know, and I'm probably coming in where a lot of people are, are coming in. Um, martial arts, I believe, is the umbrella. Yes. Okay. And then <laughs> there, there are various forms of martial arts. So um, if I'm going to turn it over to each one of you, and if you can go through um, a little bit of background about, uh, you know, what the sport is. Just give everybody um, a bit of an idea because I don't really know and I'm sure a lot of people don't know the distinction between them all. So Santiago, um, I'm gonna start with you, if that's okay, if you could yeah. talk a little bit about the, the your club and the sport. Um, well, karate is, um, is a sport that uses like um, multiple techniques. So it's not just one thing. Like, for instance, Taekwondo is uh, mostly kick-based uh, martial art, but uh, karate uses uh, punches, kicks, takedowns, and all that stuff. So it's like a mix between uh, a lot of martial arts. Okay. And um, is it always done... And again, this might be a crazy question, but I'm going to ask it. I'll be the one to ask it. Um, is it always... Um, is it against somebody? Is it never against somebody? Is it, how does that work? Um, it depends. Uh, for karate, there's two uh, types of things we do for competition. Uh, one of them is called kata, is what we call kata, which is like uh, imaginary fighting. It's like movements that have already been uh, made that we just have to follow and then uh, perfect kind of. It's like an already choreographed dance, you know? but with karate movements. And uh, that's one thing you compete in, and it's just you showing the judges your best kata, I guess. And then uh, the other thing we do for competition is kumite, which is the sparring against another person. Um, and that's uh, the point of that is to score a point and not knock out the other person, just scoring your point. And uh, yeah, it's basically the two things we do, competition. Okay. Perfect. Okay, great. Thank you for clarifying that. Uh, Gary, I'm going to turn it over to you. Yeah, so judo is, uh, people probably relate it more to wrestling. So there's no punching or kicking. It's more um, sparring with your partner, trying to throw your partner onto the ground. And if you do go to the ground and you don't score a full point, you can then do grappling techniques. So these will range from things like uh, just a hold down, which is similar to a pin in wrestling, not quite the same. Um, but then at the older levels, you can also do submission techniques. So you will do arm locks or chokes. Um, and similar to the karate, you can also do kata. So you can compete in kata where it's a demonstration uh, of forms. And typically you're doing that with a partner as well. So you're doing sort of attack and defense scenarios that are pre-choreographed. And you want to show judges that you have full control of your opponent when they do an attack and how you counterattack them. So that's another type of competition that we have is a kata competition. So the most familiar part that everybody sees though is the sparring, uh, you know, in the Olympics, it's an Olympic sport. So you'll see that one-on-one -on -one sparring, which is uh, most common. Okay, great, thank you. And uh, Aaron, over to you. Yeah, um, well, Aikido is uh, substantially different from um, either karate or judo uh, in that it, it is, uh, um, intentionally not competitive at all. Uh, so it's, uh, it, it's another take on, on uh, how, how to use martial arts in your, in your life, I guess. Um, and even, even referring to it as a sport, it may be a bit, um, a bit of a stretch. Um, although it is, a, it is a physical activity that requires a certain amount of, uh, uh, a lot of skill and, and, uh, and, uh, and physical stamina, but, um, yeah, so Aikido, Aikido's main um, 
uh, thrust, I suppose, of, of, of what it's trying to accomplish is, is really um, uh, an improvement of, of the individual uh, from a, um, uh, almost a philosophical standpoint, um, but, and, 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 and also to benefit society as a whole. So the, the, the way we, we actually practice it, um, there are some solo, there is some solo training. Um, and we do that often with, um, with a, a, a staff or a wooden sword. Um, and then there's, uh, most of the time we spend, um, with a partner and, um, and, and in those cases, the, um, the, there's a defined person who is, uh, an attacker and, 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 and a, and a person who is the defined, um, person who's doing the technique. And so, uh, really the, the way we practice is the, uh, the, the attack is made and the technique is executed just one at a time. And often it's the same technique repeated over and over again. So you can get better at it. Um, and, uh, and we know, so we know who's going to be thrown to the ground or who's going to get pinned or, or whatnot, um, uh, right from the outset. So, so the, 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 the intent is not to, um, see who's, who can, who can beat the other person, but it's more about, um, uh, how you how you can collaborate to uh, create the best technique together so it's yeah it's it's a it's a little more um it's, it's almost it's 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 more in the uh, towards the art side of the martial arts okay um i'm gonna follow up on that uh we just have a quick uh little video from the calgary fellowship of the sword Hello, I'm Lauren, introductory instructor at Calgary Fellowship of the Sword, where we study historical European martial arts. What does that mean? It means we can teach you to sword fight. <laughs> um, okay, Erin, I want to follow up on, um, you know, you said it, it, it's not competitive, uh, a lot of solo training. Is it... Um, and I think maybe this falls under a lot of martial arts, but it falls under sport. and. Uh, would you say it's sort of the control side and it's learning body movement and about, um, you know, sort of the, the inner, I'm not sure what the right word is, um, whether that's inner peace or inner control, um, is that sort of a little more within the Aikido side? Yeah, that sounds pretty close. Um, yeah. So the, the body, there is a lot of, uh, repetitive body movement in, in Aikido. Um, so you're, you're learning the art by means of, uh, repetition of a form. Um, and so we also have kata, the same as, uh, as the other ones. Um, and, uh, but in a lot of ways, the, the kata is, uh, not always a solo practice, but we almost practice all our techniques as though they're, they're a kata or a set template or a form that you're trying to repeat. And, um, create create the best expression of, of that movement. So, and it's funny when you say, you don't know if you'd call it a sport. Um, you know, I've had some of these debates with city councillors uh, who, who kind of go, oh, sport. And, and, you know, I think that's where we need to all be okay with the definition of sport, that it's getting out and getting active. And, and so I would 100% put this under sport, even though it sport doesn't have to be... Um, competitive and it doesn't have to be you know within a certain discipline so um i if anybody wants to continue sort of a debate or discussion on that beyond i would love it <laughs> um gary i'm gonna uh turn it over to you what you know what have you been able to do or have you been able to do anything within your club within your sport during the pandemic because you know you talk about um there's the kata side, but then uh, the fact that, you know, your sport, as you refer to it, like wrestling, and um, I just got off uh, a conversation with, with athletes going to Tokyo, and, you know, for sport, like, like a wrestling, it's been very difficult for them to, to train and practice because it's difficult to do on your own. Have you been able to, to do much throughout the last year, just over a year? Yeah, throughout the pandemic, uh, we've been holding uh, either Zoom or Google Meet sessions with our athletes. Uh, a lot of it was focused on a lot of strength training, conditioning. But at the same time, um, especially with our younger kids, I've been trying to instill a lot of the fundamental movement skills 
So even though you're not sparring with someone, uh, there's a lot of basic movements that are required to become you know, uh, proficient at doing judo. So I've had them do uh, just exercises with a lot of footwork. Um, lately, I've had them take a uh, pillow and stuff their judo outfit around the pillow and tie the belt on there. So they have someone that they can hang on to and, and practice throwing their pillows around. So, you know, there's a, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, modifications we've had to do to, to adapt. And uh, I think that's one of the things that's, uh, that's really uh, important to, in these times is to be able to be flexible. And that's kind of what judo means. Judo is the, the gentle way or the flexible way. And so you have to adapt your training practices and uh, you know, all the different skills that you still need to, to have in order to do judo. Uh, one of the other things which is really important is, is self-control. So when you're sparring with somebody, you're, you're dealing with another body, you need to have self-control. So a lot of the training practices we do, um, I do a lot of work with the kids to learn balance and control of their own bodies so that when it comes back time to be on the mats, that they will have good control and they you know, won't be dropping their partners when they're working out. Yeah. I think that's, that's so great. I mean, you know, clubs and sports and people have had to adapt. So the fact that you've been able to do that with a lot of your members, um, I think is key. Santiago, um, how about you guys at, uh, at your club? Have you been doing the same sort of thing? And, and, and you know, you come from a, a para-athlete side and have you continued to be able to do some of your programs, adapted programs throughout the last year uh, during this pandemic? Yes, um, for us, it was also the same. Uh, we were in Zoom. We've been in Zoom for months, uh, just teaching online, trying to correct things, uh, you know, with Zoom as best as we can. Uh, but for the pair side, uh, our pair athletes, uh, a lot of them uh, couldn't come with the pandemic and everything. Stuff just got busy for them. But we were able to keep our our like students um, uh, training and then uh, yeah so yeah we were able to keep it going in zoom and uh, it, it was tough at first uh, it took a lot of adapting but uh, we later figured out how to how to handle all of it quick question for you Santiago um, you know I know your dad has been so um open to try different programs for, for people with disabilities. Um, you know, what, uh, is there sort of a, a limit within, if there are people um, who are looking for a program for an athlete with a, with a disability, um, you know, are, are there limits or, you know, sort of what sort of um, limit, li what sort of physical limitations can, can, your club do within the sport of karate? I mean, we actually don't like look at that really because we don't want to put limits on anyone because uh, I feel like once you limit somebody, then they stop trying as much, you know? So it's really like anyone who wants to try it, anyone's ready to try it, we, we welcome them with open arms and uh, we try our best to learn how to adapt anything to to what they need to do so awesome oh that's great and uh, again we work closely with a lot of organizations and a lot of families who think that there might not be somewhere for their child so uh you know that's great and i know that your dad has been um you know huge within going okay we don't know can we do this let's try it um Aaron and Gary, I'm going to uh, ask you within your clubs, uh, do you work with, um, are there programs, adaptable programs for people with disabilities? Gary, go ahead yeah. if, if you want to start. Yeah, so we've actually done some uh, classes with uh, students from ASRAP. So they've come out and we've had, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one classes with a number of students. Um, we've also had uh, a judoka that's trained with us for a year and uh, she was blind and we had one-on-one -on -one pairing with one of our students to help them go through a regular class and we just blended them in with a regular class. Um, right now, Judo Canada has uh, a blind athlete getting ready to, for the Paralympics. Um, she's been training out in, uh, in Ottawa and Montreal. Um, she's currently, I think, in Europe right now, getting ready for one of the 
the high level competition. So, you know, uh, blind athletes in judo, that's been a, an increasingly popular area that we've uh, started to see in the judo uh, arena. Awesome. Aaron, over to you. Um, yeah, uh, we, we tend to uh, uh, accept and, and work with any disability that, that, uh, that comes in the door. Um, we've, we've had a student in a wheelchair. Um, we've had people with cognitive difficulties. Um, uh, Aikido is uh, practiced by people like right up until ex extreme old age. Uh, so um, yeah, really it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's easy to control what's happening uh, in Aikido. So, um, and that's all, you know, a lot of the, the training as I'm, as I'm sure it is in the other martial arts, but uh uh, I feel it's, it's particularly well suited to people as, as they age and, and, or if they, uh, if they do have a, a physical, uh, disability. So yeah, it, um, really it's just, uh, you know, as Santiago mentioned, you, you don't, you don't say, okay, well, you don't define it for them. You just, mm -hmm. oh, you just open the door and, and they work it out, you know, and everyone's happy to train with everybody. So it, it, it works out just fine. That's great to hear. And I know that, uh, working with, uh, Santiago's dad, you know, I, I, he had said once, we didn't know if we were able to do it, but let's see and try. And, and what's really great is a lot of programs that develop an adaptable program, those in the mainstream realize that everybody can work together. And so, you know, it's wonderful. And, and so for all the, the people on this and, and who we're going to send this out to, uh, just knowing that there are options within all of these clubs is uh is great we're going to show I, i'm going to go on to age groups and and sort of where that falls within the clubs but first we're going to show another video um why do you like martial arts so take a look what i like the most about judo is probably that it's a very complete sport uh complete activity where you can have I know it's very physical where uh, you can develop strength and, uh, and cardio, uh, but it's also a very technical spot when you, you can take your time and develop skills with, uh, with katas and, and uh, all the, the technical aspect of the sport that is really, really interesting to me. I like judo because it's fun, there's a lot of exercise, and sometimes we play games, and I like the games. Well, judo is a very unique sport. You don't meet many, many people who do judo just on the streets or at your school. Uh, judo also, whenever I'm competing or just training, I really feel in the moment. I can take a step out of this crazy, insane world and just really feel my body moving. Also, it kind of developed a lot of my self-confidence. Uh, I feel like I can defend myself a bit lot more. And uh, it also reassures me knowing that I can throw people who are bigger than me. Well, there's a lot of things I like about judo, you know, to name a few. Um, the competitive aspect of it is really cool. You know, you get to learn how to fight people at a competitive level. Um, you know, traveling, really cool. I've been to a lot of places, met a ton of new people, discovered a bunch of new cultures. Um, really, you know, it's a very inclusive sport. Um, everyone feels welcome in this sport and, you know, it helped me develop confidence in myself, you know, my ability to fight people and see true potential as, a, as an athlete. Karate is fun because you play tons of different games that help build your skills and there's great relationships between the students. You should always choose karate because it's a sport that challenges me to push myself to my max. I enjoy judo because it presents me with challenges that I wouldn't normally meet. From a physical perspective, it challenges me on many levels um, and makes me use my body in ways that you know I wouldn't be expected to use from a day-to-day -day standpoint. So my core and uh, you know upside down and right way up and um, backwards and forwards and it keeps my brain working and my neurons firing. I feel like it's going to keep my brain alive for a long time. I'm, I feel like I'm always growing. From a mental perspective, I have to challenge my limitations and um, you know keep my attitude and my sort of sports psychology is something that I, I, I encounter in judo that perhaps isn't necessarily something or at least in the same way um, present in other sports and uh, from a spiritual perspective I'm constantly required to touch base in that realm 
um, in terms of connecting with people and uh, becoming more at one with my own self and getting in touch with how I feel about my own life and, and what I'm capable of in terms of what I believe I can do. I have done things in judo that I would never have thought before I started judo 15 years ago that I would be able to accomplish. So um, from that standpoint, there are three really good reasons to be in judo. You know, the high caliber and integrity of the people who you work with and those who are teaching you that um, it's a sport I feel I'm going to be safe in for a very long time. So um, watch this space. I'll be in a judogi, I think, until I'm well into my 90s. I'm optimistic. That's awesome. Uh, really fitting because I do want to talk about age groups. And, um, you know, so the first question, and Erin, maybe I'll start with you, is, you know, what age can people start within, within your sport in your club? And, you know, we saw from, from some of those guests various ages. Uh, but then the question always comes up, and I think now coming out of the pandemic, can a, can a mature adult? begin within your club and your sport uh, right from the beginning if they have no history. So Erin, why don't, why don't you start off with sort of the, the age categories and what's best or is there ideal? Yeah, uh, well, we start our kids class at uh, about the age of five, although five sometimes, um, it depends on the, on the individual a little bit, um, six for sure. Um, really, we just, uh, we ask that uh, a, a, a child coming into the class just has the, the ability to to sit and focus when asked to do so. If they're, if they're really bouncing off the walls and they can't really um, even just like pay attention, then, you know, we might say, hey, why don't you give it, you know, a few months and, and come back. Um, but yeah, around five is good. Um, and uh, yeah, and then it goes right up through the, through the teen years. And, and then uh, um, at around 13 or so, we, the, we transition the kids from the kids class into the adult class um and uh and then that goes until uh until you basically um fall over because uh <laughs> <laughs> that's that's one of the yeah as i was saying before you know it's one of the beautiful things about aikido is uh um you know you can go at the speed that you are comfortable at and it's it's um at least at our, our dojo, we're extremely conscientious towards um, uh, personal safety and levels of comfort. And we don't want people to hurt themselves and, and uh, we want everyone to leave smiling. So, um, yeah, if, if somebody says, hey, I, I'd like to take this at, at half your speed, mm -hmm. then you respect that and that's how you do it. And you can learn a lot that way, too. So, so I'm just going to elaborate or ask one more question because I'm a mom of two teens. So if you had teens coming in, I mean, you're saying you can kind of do it whenever. Um, and they're right on that, that cusp is that, that it's a tough age. It's a tough age for somebody to come in and never have done it. Um, you know, and let's say a kid is 13 or 14 difficult age, just in normal circumstances. So then, um, you know, they're okay to start brand new and then they'd maybe put him in adults. I mean, it, it's a, I, I guess if some of the registrants have teenagers who've never done it, but are interested again, maybe not in the competitive side. So then they want to try keto and, and, and learn sort of those skills. Um, that's fine. And it's, you don't find that it's ever uncomfortable for a teen. Yeah. Uh, well, in our club, uh, we haven't had the opportunity to, to have a teen specific class. Um, just because it doesn't make sense with the numbers. Although uh, before the pandemic, we actually did kind of have a, a, a bit of a growth in that area and we were considering it. Um, we had uh, about five or six uh, teens on the mat um, generally. Uh, so we were, we were thinking of actually perhaps we should could splinter it off onto its own class. Before that, it didn't make sense to do so. Uh, and that was always a challenge because as, as you say with teens, um, uh, they might enjoy some of the kids class, but a lot of the kids class is, is fun and games and a little bit um, maybe not serious enough for them. And then on the other side, they don't really feel comfortable training with a bunch of bigger, smellier adults. And, <laughs> uh, you know, so they, uh, they might not feel like they, they don't practice with their parents, basically, you know, um, they want to have, they want to be sort of more in their own milieu. So, um, uh, but 
what we can do a lot of times in our in our dojo is is uh, sort of shepherd the teams to work with each other a little more often. And, you know, it's it's sort of thing where they'll get comfortable with it if they if they persevere and they just kind of like get used to the idea that they're going to be training with somebody who's in their sixties and and that's okay. You know, yeah. there's no reason why they that shouldn't be enjoyable. Awesome. Okay, thanks, Aaron. Santiago, how about you? Is there an ideal age to start, and and can people start at a even teen or a mature adult? I'm gonna put myself in that category uh, when they have no experience. Uh, yeah, we actually accept like all ages. Um, our one rule is that as long as the kid's body train, he can come in and train. So, uh, yeah, really. So as young as you want them. Um, I mean, karate shows a lot of discipline and like patience and stuff. So, of course, a lot of parents want to put their kids in there. So they're not as crazy and energetic. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so really, you can start at any age. Um, doesn't matter if you have zero experience and uh, you're in your you're like 25. You could still join. Um, does doesn't matter. And uh, a lot of people find like joy in starting late too they they're like oh this is something that even i could do like it's so it's a very inclusive sport i would say awesome gary over to you yeah so the same thing for us uh typical starting age is around six um there i know some clubs will have a four and five year old class they call it pre-judo it's more fundamental movement skills rolling that kind of thing with more fun and games um but we need you know, one of the things with judo is you're working with another partner. So you need a certain amount of uh, balance and coordination. And uh, one of the things that we try to teach right off the bat is that, you know, your job is to look after your partner. You know, it's not just trying to throw your partner, it's trying to make sure that they're safe and that you're working uh, appropriately. And then we've had, uh, you know, older teens start uh, all the time. They, they will come in uh, the challenge we find is that they'll come in, they get in, hooked on judo for a while. And then as other sports come into their lives, they may shift back and forth between, you know, other things that they're doing at school with other friends. Um, but then uh, we've also had adults come in. So typically in our adult class, we'll have uh, people that are um, maybe wanting a different type of physical exercise compared to the usual, you know, go to the gym, do the same routine over and over again. You know, they want to challenge themselves in other ways. So you know, we see a lot of adults coming in, younger adults coming in who uh, you know, want to get a, just a good workout that's both mental as well as physical. And then uh, the other thing that we've had to happen is that sometimes the kids start judo and then the parents join in later and they start coming in. And we've had even situations where the kids drop out, but the parents stay in. So um, that, you know, people come in at all ages. I think uh, we've had people that are still training, they're in their 70s. Um, so we cover that full range. Okay, great. Well, I mean, from all three of you, yeah, very inclusive and able to adapt to any age. Um, when we start looking at, as we're opening up, um, so for each of your clubs, are you, you know, one of the big fears, and especially coming out of this pandemic, financially, everybody's going to be um, much more restricted than possibly they were before. Um, are there, what are your plans for any sort of come try it, drop in sessions? Um, and again, just so everybody knows, you know, we hope when we're able to, to have an all sport one day, all sport one city, which is the free discovery. So just so people know we're, we're kind of looking at the fall just so that we are able to do it. But I guess from a club perspective, if, if people get a hold of you, what are the options um, that are out there? Uh, Gary, you, I'll, I'll first turn to you. Yeah, so we've uh, typically when, you know, before the pandemic, whenever anybody would call into the club and they're interested, um, I would tell them the first thing you should do is to actually just come and watch a class. You know, I think uh, especially parents can get a good feel of, of the atmosphere of the club by watching a kid's class. And then they have a good feel of whether their kid will fit in with that and have the kid there as well so that they can see is that something that they're really, really interested in or not. Um, and then we do have drop-in classes where people can come in and, and try it. We've had things where they just come in, <clears throat> excuse me, um, just with a sweatshirt and sweatpants just to, to try it. Um, and we just blend them in with the class. They'll have one of the instructors um, 
work with them as we go through a regular warm up, work with them as we go through a little lesson with them on the side while the rest of the class is doing the regular routine. So um, we usually offer that as a free service. People can come in and, and give it a shot. And now with this uh, post pandemic, uh, you know, there's lots of opportunity for people to come out and, and see the sport. So just before I ask, uh, turn that same question to Santiago, when you're talking about, you know, they, they come just in sweats and a sweatshirt. Um, so if somebody were to, to want to join, so do they purchase? Um, and again, I don't even know what it's called, so I'm not even going to try to explain, <laughs> but, uh, you know, what's involved when you join a club? Yeah, so for us, what we've done is we kind of made it so that there's two semesters. So our typical season is September uh, to January and then February till June. And so there's two semesters. In the first semester, we just lump it all together. So we'll have your membership to Judo Canada, your membership to Judo Alberta, and the club fees. And in that club fees includes your Judo outfit. Um, you know, we have our club t-shirt and things like that. So that's sort of like the package and you pay that up front in the, in the first semester. And then the second semester, you're just paying the club fees because you don't have to pay the annual national or provincial fees. Okay. Yeah. Um, but we okay. try to make it so that it's all inclusive. So when you want to join, you have an outfit, everything's there for you right yeah. away. Okay, perfect. Outfit. That's the right word. Thank you. <laughs> Santiago, how about you? Uh, drop in what's sort of the plan if people are interested. I, I know we can't say specifically because we don't know the, the stages, but uh, what do you guys do with that? Um, what we do is uh, we do like a free class. Like, so it's like you could try it out for free, come one class, doesn't matter if you're wearing like sweats or anything, just uh, wear like any sports wear really. And then, uh, yeah, just try it out and see if uh, it interests you in any way. Uh, and then once you see, it, if you're interested and want to do it more further, then uh, you talk to some of us and then uh, we make sure we get your karate suit, karate gi, we call it, um, ready. And then, uh, yeah, that's basically it. Okay. Uh, Aaron, over to you. Uh, what's what's sort of the plan and I guess what you did and what you're going to do for, for drop-in, for joining, et cetera. Yeah. Well, uh, before the pandemic and, and, and uh, I'm probably restarting again in September, our, uh, our normal setup for, for the adult class was um, a beginner could, uh, could just start, um, try a few classes for free. Um, just to check it out. And uh, as we always recommend, yeah, coming to watch a class as well. Um, and then, yeah, if they like it, they can try a few, uh, say two or three uh, classes and, and just, just test it out. And then if they decide they wanna join, then um, they have the option of, of paying just a monthly fee, um, just a, a monthly membership rate, or we have, we have a, a intro package, which, uh, which includes the, uh, the gi, the, the outfit, <laughs> um, and uh, and three months of training um, in, in one package, and it ends up being that the the uh, the gi is actually uh, included. It, it's not it's a it's free basically. If you want to pay for the first three months up front, and then from that point on, you can decide on your on if you want to pay monthly or in a semester or yearly. Okay, awesome. And, and then I just uh, should say that, but because of the pandemic, all that's uh, on hold because we're not training regularly. It's all, it's, it's sometimes it's online. Sometimes it's outside in a park when we're back inside. It's a, it's a very modified class when we were allowed to go back inside, um, last, uh, October, um, we had a very modified kind of style of training that was very low, um, low cardio, uh, because that's what was allowed. Um, so when we're in those kind of situations, if, if we're, if we're only doing outside and online, there actually is no fee at all. Um, and then if we are, uh, in the dojo, we're just, uh, taking a really small, uh, just a drop in fee each time, because we don't, we don't know when it's going to, when the plug might get pulled and, and, uh, we don't want to overcharge for, for future classes that you might not be able to take. Yeah. Okay. Um, the point I'd like to make yeah, perfect. Take, Go one ahead. thing is that we have uh, family rates as well. So judo and most martial arts, you'll find that a lot of families join in. And so then we have reduced rates depending on the number of uh, children or participants that join into the club. So 
you know, that's another way that we try to make it more affordable for some of the, the, the families that want to join as a group. Yeah. yeah. And as you said, a lot of times, right? Parents are often there or, and they all want to try it. So uh, we're just, we have one final video. Um, take a look. It is um, on martial arts advice. To a beginner, I'd say, don't worry. Uh, you know, don't be afraid. There's a, a few people that might be bigger than you or people that will have a higher rank or even a black belt, but don't worry. They're all here to help. It's a very, very safe spot where you learn how to, uh, how to fall, how to, uh, how to defend yourself very safely. So just don't worry, come and have fun. I would tell them to be ready to learn so many things, to f fall without hurting yourself or to throw people without hurting them. And another thing is to speak in Japanese, including counting. Ich, ni, san, chi, go, look, sich, hach, ku, well, you should practice a lot. Uh, you gotta train, learn lots of new skills, and just be ready to have fun, learn new things, enjoy it, and yeah, practice, practice, practice. Well, especially to young girls, um, to not be afraid to join the sport. Um, it's a very inclusive sport, and I get it, it can be intimidating, but if you keep going, you'll, you'll make a lot of really cool friends, you know, meet a lot of cool people, and you will feel welcome in this sport, so. Just don't give up. They're all talking about confidence. And uh, I know that's one of the things with martial arts is building confidence. And I think that's what we're really gonna find coming out of this pandemic is uh, people are gonna need to build their, their confidence within themselves, within the community. Um, so just as we wrap up, just to let everybody know, and uh, uh, we have the, oh, there we go, Sandra, thank you. Sandra has listed all of the club links um, so we will have those, we will have this posted on our website and, uh, the entire recording and all of the links. Uh, I just want to turn over the panelists. If you have one last word of advice, um, um, uh, you know, anything to, to people thinking about registering or getting involved. I know there's questions, you know, best program, what's best for, for, for girls, boys, whatever that might be for self-defense, for confidence, uh, anything, but if there's any advice, uh, Aaron, I'm going to uh, start off with you. Mm, sure. Um, yeah, I would say uh, any dojo out there is very excited to have anyone just come and, and watch. I think you'll find a really welcoming environment in all the martial arts. Um, uh, you, you may watch some of them and think, oh man, that's, that's really intimidating or I could never do that. But um, uh, my experience in, in, uh, in every dojo that, I, that I've been to um, is, has been really, uh, really warm and, and, and everyone's just happy to see you. So um, yeah, just don't, don't feel like, uh, don't feel intimidated by it and, and, and just, uh, you know, relax and, and enjoy yourself. And everyone was a beginner to start with. Right. And so, uh, you, you shouldn't feel like that you're slowing things down or, or, or that you're, um, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be embarrassed that you don't know something because nobody expects you to. Awesome. Gary, over to you. Yeah, I, I think I would say the same thing is explore, come out to the clubs, uh, Visit the 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 uh, different dojos. Talk to the instructors. Talk to the other participants because you can get a lot of insight in terms of you know how that club operates and and the atmosphere that they have. And I think uh, you'll be surprised at what you see. Awesome, Santiago. Yeah, along the same lines, it's like um, starting any sport can be intimidating at first because you know you see all these guys that have probably been doing it for years, um, but yeah, I guess uh, just try and see which, which um, let's say for martial arts, which one fits for you. So if you're not very into like karate, maybe you have to go try judo or aikido. So um, yeah, try different ones and see which one is the right fit for you. Yeah, do some research. Oh, do some yeah. research online and, and just get a sense of what these martial arts are about because they're there it's like flavors of ice cream you know you just gotta <laughs> you gotta find the one that that works for you and they uh 
they, they all um, put emphasis on, on different, slightly different things. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's, uh, it's just a matter of finding a good match. Great advice. Yeah, great advice from, from all of you. Um, thank you, Santiago, Gary, and Aaron for um, spending this lunch hour with us, getting uh, us a little more educated on, on your sport and activity and, and club also. And uh, for all of those who registered who are part of this, thanks for joining us. Hopefully you, you learned a bit more. And if you have more questions, just reach out to Sport Calgary. Uh, as we said, we will have all of these links. We will have this video on our website. And um, yeah, you know, everybody, we're getting, we're, we're getting close to opening back up. And um, it, uh, it we're getting there and so we're going to be able to register for these uh, for these sports and these clubs very soon so thank you for joining us um, stay tuned we will let you know what our next lunchtime faces of calgary sport um, so again thank you to our panelists thank you everybody for joining us and we just uh, wish everybody a great rest of the day and um, stay safe uh, I'm going to say get vaccinated, stay safe so that we can get back to all of our normal activities and we can uh, visit and meet new people and, uh, you know, back to the world that we knew. So thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your day.